Here's what I did after I discovered that my children's python laid a clutch of eggs. She had these eggs wrapped up really tight, so I took my time and gently removed her from the eggs. Sometimes this can be tricky, but after successfully getting her off the eggs, we discovered that she laid eight eggs. However, one of those eggs was a slug, which is an infertile egg, meaning that there's no baby snake growing inside. The egg on the very top of the clutch has sort of a wet look to it, which is not a good sign. I have a feeling that egg is going to go bad. After marking the eggs, I transferred them into to my egg box. The egg box is designed to maintain a high level of humidity throughout the incubation process. A high level of humidity is critical for incubation. It keeps the eggs from drying out and the embryos healthy. When candling the eggs, you could see that this egg is a slug. There's no veins or no embryo growing inside. The rest of the eggs look fertile. Last year, it took my children's pythons about 45 to 50 days to hatch. A lot of things could happen over the next 45 to 50 days, but we're going to do our best to hatch out these baby snakes. These children's python eggs are on day 14 of incubation. And one of the eggs clearly went bad. I didn't want to risk tearing one of the good eggs by trying to pull it off. So I thought maybe I could cut it open and use a syringe to suck out the inside. However, when I cut into the egg, I found out that the inside was already solidified. This egg smells terrible and it's a cesspool for bacteria, so I need to get it out of there. So now my plan is to cut off the top of the eggshell and remove all of the content inside. The soft eggshell made cutting the egg pretty easy. I used a pair of tweezers to gently pry up the solidified yolk. When I was able to remove it, you could clearly see the embryo that passed away. So the egg was fertile, but right from the start it had a wet look, which is never a good sign. And then I dried out and cleaned everything else that was inside. Next, I trimmed away the rest of the eggshell, being very careful not to damage any of the other eggs. These eggs are fragile, so I had to be gentle, but I also had to work quickly because I can't keep these outside of the incubator for very long. After removing the excess eggshell, I added a little bit of antifungal powder to prevent any other mold from growing. I'll keep you all updated on this clutch. Last week we discovered that one of the eggs from our children's python clutch went bad. So we quickly and carefully removed that egg, ensuring that we didn't damage any of the other eggs during the process. After cutting away the excess eggshell, we added some antifungal powder to help prevent any other mold from growing. These eggs are now on day 21 of incubation, so let's check up on them and see how they're holding up. Last season it took about 45 to 50 days for these eggs to hatch, so they're just about at the halfway point. So far it looks like the bad egg removal technique worked. The other eggs still look healthy and I don't see any new mold growing. I do see a little bit of mold here, but it doesn't look very threatening, so I'm going to wipe it off and I'll keep a close eye on it to make sure it doesn't start spreading. Overall, I'm happy with the way these eggs look at this point of incubation. This one egg is dented in a little bit more and it has a few funny colored spots, but I think it's going to be okay. Over the next few weeks, we'll start to see these eggs dent in even more as they get close to hatching. I'll try to get a video of them hatching because unlike the ball pythons that we just hatched, when children's pythons hatch, they are on the move. Our children's python eggs are on day 29 of incubation. Which means they're more than halfway done. I'm keeping a close eye on these eggs. Because about two weeks ago, we had to remove one of the eggs that went bad. The egg became slimy, smelly, and it was festering with bacteria, so we had to get it out of there. We cut off the top of the egg, removed the solidified yolk, and then cleaned everything up. I didn't want to risk tearing one of the good eggs, so I left the bottom part of the egg shell. The procedure seemed to work, but there's one egg that I'm a little bit concerned with. Since removing the bad egg, this egg has severely dented in. I I don't see any rips or tears, but it's hard to tell what's going on inside. So I'm going to candle the eggs to see how everything is developing. Because of how the egg is dented, the candling isn't working very well. But I could still see veins and I don't notice any very dark spots. Which would mean that the egg is solidifying inside and ultimately going bad. As far as I could tell right now, all of these eggs still look good. But a lot could go wrong in the next 15 to 20 days when I expect to see these eggs hatch. So I'll definitely be keeping a close eye on these eggs and of course I'll keep you updated. These children's pythons are on day 39 of incubation. So I expect these eggs to hatch within the next 10 days. You can see that the eggs are really starting to dent in now. If the eggs looked like this a few weeks ago, I would be concerned that the eggs were getting dehydrated. But at this stage of incubation, it's not uncommon for them to dent in like this. I'm still a little bit concerned with that one egg that's significantly dented in. But at this point, there's really not much I could do. I'll candle the eggs to see if I could show you some movement. At 39 days, the snakes are likely fully developed or close to it. The snake's eyes, mouth, and internal organs are formed and functional. Over the next few days, the snakes will continue to absorb the yolk inside of the egg and put on a little bit of size. Look closely at this last egg. You could actually see the pattern on the snake's skin through the eggshell. Children's pythons are such beautiful snakes and I can't wait to see them hatch. But I have to be careful and keep a close eye on them because last year a few of the babies escaped from the egg box. Unlike the ball pythons that you've seen hatch here, when children's pythons use that egg tooth to slice open the egg, they don't stay in the egg for very long. 
These children's pythons are on day 43 and apparently they're hatching. And in typical children's python fashion, as soon as they hatch, they are on the move. These little ones are adorable. We had a total of six eggs in this clutch. Let's see if all of them hatch. After removing the cover, I see at least two more. One thing that I'm noticing is all of these snakes are nice and plump, which is a good sign. It means they absorbed all of their yolk and didn't have any development issues. This little one decided to hide underneath the egg crate. And just like the others, this one looks really healthy as well. So four of the six eggs hatch. So we still have two more eggs to hatch and I'm hoping that there's not any issues with them. You can see the tiny little pips that these snakes made. A pip is a slice in the egg that the baby snakes make using their egg tooth when they're ready to hatch. If you've been following this clutch's journey you'll remember that there was that one egg that had some significant denting that was making me a little nervous. Well that one and the one right next to it are the two eggs that haven't hatched yet so I'm still a little nervous. I'll give them another day to hatch on their own and if they don't I'll cut the egg open to see if everything's all right. These children's pythons just hatched yesterday and they look amazing. Now that they're all out of their eggs, I'm going to leave them together on this damp paper towel until they have their first shed. There were a total of six eggs in this clutch, but only four of the eggs have hatched. So let's check up on the other two eggs. Since the rest of the clutch hatched two days ago and these two eggs haven't, I suspect there may be a problem with these eggs. At this point in incubation, the snakes are fully developed, so I'm going to cut open the egg to see if I could help out the snake. I work slow and carefully while cutting to ensure that I don't accidentally injure the snake. Snake. I'm not seeing any movement, so I think we may have lost this little one. But I would like to take a closer look so I could better understand what happened. I could see when I opened up the egg some more that unlike the other snakes who absorbed all of their yolk, this little one didn't. Here you could see all of the yolk that the snake didn't absorb. And in this photo you could see why. It looks like the snake was twisted up in its own umbilical cord, cutting off essential nutrients. And the second egg didn't turn out any better. It's terribly unfortunate, but now we need to focus on the four healthy snakes. My children's pythons hatched seven days ago. We've been waiting for them to shed for the first time and it looks like they did. But I only see three snakes and I know we hatched out four. After shedding, these snakes are much more active. Over the last few days, they weren't climbing. They just spent all of their time underneath the paper towel. Shedding is an uncomfortable and vulnerable time for snakes. So during the process, they spend most of their time in hiding. But after shedding, they become more active and they're usually looking for a meal. These three little ones colors are nice and vibrant and it looks like they're doing great. But I know we hatched four snakes and I think the last one might be under the paper towel. This little one is still in hiding because it hasn't shed yet. If you look closely you can see that its colors are a little dull and its skin sort of has a glossy look to it. As a comparison the snake on the top shed and the snake on the bottom hasn't. After the snakes shed I separate them all into their own enclosure. But I'll leave them together for another day or two while that last snake sheds and I get their enclosures ready. Once that last little one sheds I'll separate them all into their own enclosure and then I'll offer them their first meal.